Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and uh, I am finally back in my favorite canyon. That's what she said, maybe, I don't know. Um, anyways, the canyon that I like to hike in most, that is local to me, kind of my secret spot, if you will. It's not totally secret, locals know about it, but it's open again, and uh, the tyrannical reign of the Rona appears to be, it appears to have passed on this mountain range. So finally I can be up here again, and uh, I just shot a first impressions video on my Benchmade bailout that I just got from River's Edge Cutlery. And then I came down here uh, to do my next installment, which is gonna be kind of the field testing on this guy. What's a little bit hilarious is I just filmed like five minutes of it at least and went to change the camera angle to show you how it does at prying and uh, realized the camera was not recording that whole time. So I'm gonna go through some of this again. And uh, because I'm not really feeling like overly explaining it like I did the first time. I probably talked in circles a little bit. I'm just going to go through real quick the types of things that I'll need a lightweight outdoor pocket knife like this with my intended use of it. Um, the things that I'll need it to be good at, to be able to excel through, and that I'll need to be confident in its abilities with. So one of the biggest things that I use my knives for outdoors um, beyond like cutting my sandwich in half on my hike is it's not uncommon um, with the trails that I like to hike um, for me to find places where the trail is really overgrown especially because a lot of the time I like to hike trails that not a lot of people know about not a lot of people make it up to um, kind of beyond where the average hiker would stop and a lot of the time I also like to get off trail and I start following like small game trails and stuff like that so I do usually have my fixed blade on my pack right here so that I can pull that out and use it if I need to. Um, but it's great to know that my folder that's on me is capable as well. And uh, yeah, it's sometimes I've left my pack sitting somewhere and I'm climbing up a face or whatever it may be. And I need my folder to be able to do anything that might come up to it. So I ask a lot of my outdoor folders and even sometimes just because I want to use them, they're what I pull out instead of my fixed blade just because I want to enjoy my knives and uh, it, find excuses to get them dirty and, and put them through material. So I'm next to this here. I don't know what kind of tree this is. And uh, I've already done a fair bit of chopping on it. Um, but because I didn't catch it on film, we're going to do it again. So I like to be able to go through things that are at least like pointer finger thick um, with my folders. I feel like that's a reasonable amount to ask of a folding knife. So this has a good variety of thicknesses on these little branches here. This is kind of overgrowing a spot that I actually like to bring my family up to picnic at. Um, so I've got no problem kind of clearing this away a little bit and uh, I'm not gonna harm this tree in any way by doing so. The piece that's under here is dead. This is rotting wood. So I'm gonna cut some of these off and away from here and then uh, we'll test the tip a little bit, kind of jabbing in and prying down on there. But I'll go ahead and start just showing how good this sucker is at cutting. Goes through these little guys with ease. These frankly, obviously are still growing. So they're a little bit green. They're fairly soft, but this wood isn't an overly soft wood. Um, I like, I've already found, I can kind of choke back on this a little bit because it's got a little bit of a palm swell and a little bit of a hook here at the end of the handle. I can just kind of get my two foremost fingers on here to chop with and it works great. Um, this 3V, so far in my experience, is doing really well. Let's see if I can get through two at once. Yeah. Um, I've got zero edge deformations. I've done quite a bit of this type of cutting so far, and uh, it's doing great. I like the Ergos having this kind of thumb guard here um, for this type of use. On some outdoor knives, I like to be able to choke up almost like a Puko. And on this, I kind of still could in a hammer grip. I could get my hand kind of right up, like the webbing between my fingers all the way up kind of over that hump, which isn't super comfortable, but it's doable. Um, but with this knife, I find myself really liking it in a saber grip. And for this type of task, it's great at that. Let's go ahead and clear this up just a little bit more. I'm gonna do some push cuts through this one. Just kind of see. Yeah, it bites in really well. It took me like three push cuts to get through this little guy. Um, now you can see this piece I've already chopped through. It's uh, thicker than my thumb. 
I'm gonna go ahead and go a little higher up on it and do some more chopping here. That way you guys can see. Just cut some of that debris away. So this is a pretty fair thickness. This is not a soft wood, frankly. It's still growing and it's green, so it's not like it's as hard as it would be if it were dead standing, but um, it's going through that really well. Um, this 3V is proving on first impressions to be doing what 3V should. It's tough. It's holding its edge um, really well, actually. I thought I'd see some deformations from going in like through knots and stuff, and I'm not seeing anything like that. So. Um, so far, so good. I'm going to move the camera closer to this little dead piece so that you guys can see me do a little bit of prying with it. All right, so like I said, this wood is already dead. Uh, this is very much dead. There's like spiders coming out of there. So this is a little bit nasty, but it does stick in fairly well. That tip, um, definitely, I'd have to hold it side by side with my bug out, but it feels stockier to me out to the tip. I like that. Um, this backspacer, huge improvement for this type of task. I'll just say that right now. I want to be able to put my thumb up on here when I'm doing this. So it's biting in fairly decent for being such a small light knife. This thing is not doing too shabby. There we go. Yeah, I'm really, I'm torquing on that good. I don't have any bending, any flexing. And uh, everything is still every bit as sharp as it was right out of the box from River's Edge Cutlery. So that is doing well. I like that. This edge really has held up even better than I expected. I kind of thought that I would see at least some slightly dull spots. Yeah, that's doing great. <laughs> I'm impressed. Um, a lot of people did complain about the 3V, at least on the early ones of these. I think Benchmade has updated their heat treat. So this one appears to be doing real well. I like that. Very cool. There is the Benchmade fail out. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, this is great. I really like this knife so far and uh, I'll be doing some more testing as I have this knife in pocket. I'm just going to look for opportunities to use it out on the trail and such. Um, but I'm glad to see that in this initial testing, it has done very well. You can see uh, that finish seems to be holding up great. There's definitely some kind of residue, but that appears to be on the surface of it. It's not like it's scratched through that coating, which is great to see. Um, I like this coating finish, by the way. I think it looks great. This kind of silvery gray color. It's got a little bit of like a metallic finish to it. I'm not sure what coating they're using on this model, but I like it quite a bit. I think it looks great. And uh, yeah, it's passing this test so far with flying colors. <laughs>